All right, so looking within the head folder, I'm now going to take the head that's on top, and I'm going to take its opacity down a little bit. And I want to decide, based on my sketch, where do I want the eye to go? Because the head is made up of the cranium and the mandible. And I like to use a cranium from one creature and the mandible of the other. So I want to use this mandible, and I like that eye, but I need it in a different position. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to circle around this eye for the lizard. Take it back up to 100% opacity, and then duplicate just the eye, Command-J. And Photoshop shouldn't lag on me. It should be able to do it. Let's see. So that doesn't work, because I guess that, that shortcut's taking some memory for Photopea, I've, it's a new problem. What I did is instead I went to layer, duplicate layer, which is what the command J shortcut is. But instead of it duplicating my selection, it just duplicated the whole layer. So what do I need to do? I need to select around it, because I wanted a duplicate, a copy of this eye. And then I'm gonna say select inverse, which is everything outside what I selected, and then I'm going to hit delete. All right, so now I have an eye. Now I'm going to move that eye where I want it. And I can use opacity to kind of place it. I want it right on top, right there. Then I'm going to turn on the lizard behind it and up that angle. And now I'm going to play with that lizard head with transform. So I'm going to so edit free transform. It's so weird. It's glitching a lot. It's glitching on my old selection. But I'm going to take the whole head, say edit free transform. There we go. And now I'm going to warp it where I want the edges in the same place, but I'm going to try to shift the perspective of that eye and mouth. Because you see there's the mouth, and there's the head and the eye socket. And I want it set back to there. So warping did a lot for me there. And now I can use my 100% soft edged eraser, just like we did for our landscape fairly large, like around 100 pixels or so, or 200 pixels. And now I can start with 100% opacity and a soft edge, 0% hardness. I can start blending the two together a little bit, getting rid of that hard edge where it overlaps with the cranium I want to use. Once I get rid of the hard edge, I can start blending it in a little bit differently. I also want this edge to line up with that edge. So I'm going to go to Edit, Pre-Transform, and Warp. And then try not to mess with too much. I'm going to push and pull it like it's cookie dough that I'm rolling. And work on getting that edge, there we go, to kind of line up. while well, still not missing the rest. Now I can also do that by taking the background head and free transforming that just a little bit. So lining things up. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna warp it. I'm just gonna push it in so that the jawline fits and so that the eye still fits. So if I take the opacity down, even in the middle of a transformation, I can do this. I'm going to label the eye, because that's on its own layer. And I want to erase with that soft eraser all this stuff. And 
And I want to warp just the inside of this face. So this is how difficult it is to kind of change the direction of reference, even just a little bit. So edit, free transform. Got to be on the right layer. Want it on this layer. Edit, free transform, and warp. But this time I'm not going to use the edges at all. I'm only going to use this inside. So it doesn't change my outside edge as much. So I'm kind of turning the angle of the creature. So that it all can match. All right, then I hit return. Okay, now I can go to that eye. I can play with its opacity. Maybe I move it slightly so that that rhino's eye is set within there. And then take it up to 100% opacity, and then I'm going to erase out its hard edges with the eraser. And I'm just using my mouse, but if I wanted more specific control, I would use the the tablet with the pressure sensitive setting set and then I can just go in in a really fine-tuned way and get at these edges to blend them together. Then I want to erase out the inside of the eye as well to reveal that other eye. So this is the combination of three different elements. You know, the eye the mandible and the cranium with those ears. Next, I haven't done any kind of color correction yet. I'm just kind of roughly placing these. But the eye is important enough that you want to get one that you're happy with. Okay, and now I've got to add the crest that I'm thinking of using. So I'm going to go right to Edit Free Transform and right to Warp in order to kind of change the angle a little bit. There we go. Get a little bit more on the inside. Okay, so that looks about right. Then I can scale it. Just right click within that Transform box. Kind of decide how, how much I want on this. And I'm going to need to change the angle a little bit more. For the big guns, I'll use perspective and shift it a little. And then I can go back to scale, hold down shift, stretch it. So that's looking closer. Okay. Put it where I want it. I can turn down the opacity a little bit just so I can see where that overlap is. I don't want to cover up the eye, but it might be dramatic to have that little fringe go around it. So now I'm going to blend the internal edges. So I'm going to use my eraser 100%. And I'm going to erase away on these internal edges. I have not color corrected yet, but I want to make sure that that eye is visible okay. underneath this crest I'm thinking of using. For my fantasy creature. That I can get rid of those other hard edges. So I have the kind of the ears tucked underneath. Yes, the colors don't match at all. They're terrible. but I'm just trying to get the placement roughed in. All right. So there I have a little bit of my head. 
I think I can play a little bit more with this crest with uh, edit free transform. We played with it with all projects so far, but this is where you're really trying to make it believable within the anatomy. And the more you alter it, the more you're making your own decisions beyond just what the reference has. And whether you rotate it, scale it, warp it, distort it, all of that's helpful. So I like it right there. All right. Don't worry about clean cutouts yet. So we have to do color correcting before that. Now I can close the head folder. And what's great about putting it into a, an organizing folder that way is I can move the whole thing together. As long as I uncheck auto select and I have the, the folder selected, I can move the whole thing together and see how it will bolt onto my sketch. Now let's look at the body. Open that up. Very excited about some of this reference, but I want to put the head on top of it. Come on. So you can see how that kind of works with the angle and the spine. And then I have my buffalo. I turn on auto select again. And I'm going to lock the head just so I don't accidentally move things around. And I'm looking at a few things. I'm looking at like the angle of the neck there from the rhinoceros's head and how it flows through with the spine. So yeah, there are like two very different ways that can work, right? You're kind of choosing your approach. Now, good character design usually makes really strong choices. So this is obviously like very heavy in the front and very narrow in the back. It's something I like about it. So I'm going to use that, but I'm going to change these feet because if this was an actual creature, he would just fall over, right? The weight's too on the head. So I'm going to use this for the collarbone. So I'm going to grab these shoulders, the collarbone, and then the full feet. Because those are weight-bearing feet. Right? Command-J. Hopefully it works. It worked. Great. So now I can move that onto where I want those shoulders. And I can use Edit Free Transform to grow it, to tilt it, to warp it, distort it, to get it to feel proportional. I definitely recommend you take the, the legs and collarbone all together, or the top arms and collarbone all together. In the morning class, I said it was like taking a G.I. Joe figure and just ripping off the head, snapping the, the little rubber band, taking off the legs. But you want the torso and the arms all together because it's like one strong unit. Otherwise, it can be like sticking toothpicks into a potato. You know, it doesn't feel like they have strength because they're not connected. So even though I don't want that, that extra head of the rhinoceros down there, I'm not going to push it up where I don't think it works with the anatomy, right? That changes the creature. I need that full rib cage. So I think that's about where I want it. And then I have the rib cage here, and then it tapers, and it has it's going to have these really narrow back feet. I can also play with this reference and transform it before I mess with the internal edges. And maybe I will distort it. And bring those feet a little bit lower to the ground, right? I think that works. 
and then just to